Hello, my name is Steen Johansen and I'm happy to present our paper Investigating Potentials of Shape-Changing Displays for Sound Zones on behalf of myself and my co-authors. I want to start by briefly describing what a sound zone is and the motivation behind investigating ways of supporting how we interact with them. Petlehem et al. define a sound zone as a defined area in which the volume of a particular sound is increased while simultaneously decreasing it in other areas. This enables different users to listen to different sounds within the same room without disturbing each other, such as the two persons in the right side of this illustration. Previous research has outlined different challenges for designing interaction with sound zones. And this includes the fact that sound zone systems have different spatial properties than other current speaker systems. They have a position from which the optimal listening experience can be had. And ideally, the user should be very close to this position to not be disturbed by other sound zones. Like other speaker systems, the volume can be turned up and down. Sound zones have a size which can be narrowed or expanded. And they can overlap. For example, if the size of one sound zone is expanded into another sound zone, so this means that the person in the small sound zone is now disturbed by the sound from the big zone. We focus on shape-changing visualizations for two reasons. First, expressing information through a physical shape can fulfill aesthetic goals in addition to functional. Second, mechanical movements and shape-changing features are increasingly integrated into speaker systems. Neither of these examples here, however, carry information about the sound. So inspired by this, we suggest that dynamic movements and shapes could be designed for informational purposes in relation to interaction with sound zones. And as a first step towards this, we focus on how such physical shapes are experienced visually. And we constrain our design to fit a sound bar. To develop types of shapes and connect movements to specific interactions, we conducted a design session with 12 experts with experience with sound zone systems. From sketching sessions, we defined four basic shapes shown to the left in the slide. We also defined four ways of displaying overlapping sound zones and two types of movement. Vertical, which we hypothesize would be useful for displaying volume changes, and horizontal movement for displaying position changes. A final takeaway from the session was that volume and size properties should be considered as one, since when you increase the volume, you also increase the sound zone area. To evaluate these basic shapes and movements, we constructed a prototype using motorized iteration. The scale and resolution of the display was determined by the size of the room of the study, the resolution of the sound zone system, and constraints set by the mechanical solution. This resulted in a prototype with 48 individually moving pins with a vertical displacement of 10 cm per pin. The prototype consists of 12 modules, each uh, with four motorized potentiometers. These four potentiometers are controlled by an Arduino Nano, which is connected to a central Arduino Mega. As shown in the slide, we could now display the basic shapes and movements defined previously. The study took place in a lab with two active sound zones where we recorded both video and audio. We placed two controllers in front of participants, uh, which controlled the position and volume of one of the sound zones. We used an ultra-wideband positioning tab to determine the position of the sound zone and a rotary potentiometer for volume. We recruited 17 participants with no prior experience with sound zone systems. We then started each trial with a non-verbal introduction to the sound zone system by letting participants explore the space. Then we introduced each participant to a shape and a movement, and we asked them to perform an interaction that would match the visualization using either the volume or the position controller. In a third phase, we asked participants to freely explore shapes and movements through interacting with the controllers. And finally, we conducted debrief interviews. Analyzing the collected data, we counted participants' choices in the elicitation phase, and we conducted an inductive thematic analysis of the video and audio material. And I'll present four themes emerging from this analysis. First of all, our findings from the elicitation phase showed that participants clearly related horizontal movements to position changes and vertical movement to volume changes. 
Five participants were not consistent at the outset of the trials, but four of them began to choose consistently after the first half of the shapes were shown. Then we found that participants expected the sound zone to have different properties according to different shapes. For the curved shape, for example, they expected the sound to fade slowly from the center of the zone, but for black shapes, they expected the sound to be very contained in a more clearly defined area. When the display was divided into two sections, 14 participants expected the sound of each zone to distribute equally out in the visualized area. And a single pin was experienced as relating directly to the user, and as such, they didn't expect, for example, to be able to share the sound zone with a different person. For patterns relating to overlapping sound zones, we found that participants were confused uh, when the shape included a border between two curves. Some described it as a third zone. We also found that some participants positioned themselves further away from the static sound zone uh, when the border pin was included, as can be seen on the slide. For the fourth theme, we found that participants generally mapped the width of the display to the width of the room. However, in two instances, participants chose to position themselves in a 90 degree angle from the display, and that limited the movement to only be within the width of the display. Our paper contributes with two key takeaways. First, our elicitation study shows that participants relate the experience of sound zones to other experiences with sound, and that means that in several cases, the sound zone system behaved in a way that contradicted their experiences. The distinctions made in our design session with experts were not as clear to participants uh, with no prior experience with such systems. So this, for example, relates to the distinction between a sound zone and a sound source. And that wasn't made by participants. And that emphasizes that designing interaction with sound zone systems should be viewed as designing interaction with the sound itself together with the spatial properties. Second, we gather our findings of shape and movement experiences in the illustration showed here. We found that it matters what shapes we use to visualize the sound zones. And this can be elaborated in two dimensions. Uh, and that relates to how much information a shape carries and whether or not this information is visualized in a concrete or in an abstract manner. For example, two curves provide more information than two black shapes, but both are concrete visualizations of the sound zones. The single pins, on the other hand, offer more abstract information by representing the user indirectly. So with these key takeaways, I would like to say thank you for watching this presentation and please feel free to reach out for further questions or discussions.